wait, Hollywood Rumble video link down below. Spicy stuff, but anyway. Stella Blade, you know, I have seen this ass more than any other piece of pixelated media outside of the succubi that V throws me in my Discord DMs. Absolutely crazy. And being the horrible misogynist that I am, it falls upon men of a culture like myself to defend women. At this point, mainly from other women. Man, this timeline is just bizarre. But yeah, Stella Blade, which I believe is only coming out for PlayStation, which is gay. I would have bought the title just to support the derriere and the game director who told the naysayers to eat a dick. Very based indeed. Speaking of Games Radar Plus, game director Hyung Tae Kim discussed the character design of protagonist Eve. That design, built around the body scan of Korean model Shin Jae Un, has been a focus of Stella Blade's early trailers, and while we know much more about Eve, Kim suggests that that's deliberate. When it comes to the design, we put special attention on the back of the character because the player is always facing the back of the character when they're playing, he said. That's what they see most of, so we thought this was pretty important. True. Wow, solid and good reason. It's been a few years. Before Stellar Blade, developer Shift Up was best known for gacha game Goddess of Victory Nikkei, which is well known for focusing on the back of its anime characters right up to last year's collaboration with Nier Automata. Kim argues, however, that the studio style is about more than pure titillation. The deliberately glamorous design of characters like Eve has become somewhat of a brave thing to be going for or attempting, he claims. Yeah, welcome to 2024, where it's brave to point out that sex sells! Moving on, uh, Kim also reflects on the broader cultural situation surrounding characters like Eve both within Korea and globally, and his own desire when it comes to the games he plays and makes. I personally think that compared to movies, animations and manga and so on, people are especially strict towards games. In games, there are all the views that people have which are not always positive about unrealistically beautiful characters. Honestly, when I play a game, I would like to see someone who is better looking than myself. That's what I want. I don't want to see something normal, I want to see something more ideal. I think that is very important in a form of entertainment. This is, after all, entertainment targeted for adults. Does anyone remember a time when this was in no way controversial at all? You mean you want to make a game with fictional environments and characters and you want to make it appealing to an audience as to satisfy the customer and to make money? Oh my god, that's genius! By the way, I heard the company fired two women during the production as well, one of which was a former director at Shift Up, and the reason they sold to the public was because they were feminists, which let's be honest is really base. I fully endorse the firing of any and all feminists from every aspect of society. But no, it's because they were part of a radical, borderline criminal group that's known for misandry called Megalia. And the other one, I believe, burst into a boardroom meeting with the investors. I might want to double check on that one though. But here is my take. This weird Puritan-esque pixel-focused spiral, I'm starting to think doesn't have anything to do with the male gay specifically. No, I think they just hate humanity in general. And the reason I say this is because there is very obviously a clear disconnect between the activist loons versus, say, the regular consumer. Yeah, no shit. And this isn't male or female, though. Both men and women appreciate aesthetics, whether the form is male or female. Women can appreciate a handsome male character, and so can a guy, just for very different reasons. If a guy has a ruggedly handsome male character and he's built like a built brick shithouse, guys think, whoa, he looks like he can kick some ass. He's in an environment where he needs to kick some ass. What am I going to do with him? Use him to kick some ass. That's pretty much it. We don't really care for much else. Female character, same thing. Sexy, athletic, and she's armed to the teeth. She can kick some ass. What are we going to do with her? Use her to kick some ass. The thing is with guys though, we like our female characters to have function. Ask any guy this. If there's a female character in a game that's hot, but she's badly programmed or is annoying as all hell, the hotness factor will cease to matter very, very quickly. That and you'll start looking for creative ways to kill the character. If you can, that is. Now, the reason I say it's not specifically the male gaze or the male audience rather, is because there is no mitigation of male characters who look insanely unrealistic more so than the women do, and that only appeals to men. Women do not like insanely disproportionate male aesthetics. This is why bodybuilding is far more appealing to men than it is to women. Nor is that driving sales by women. Women like pretty and girly things. They don't like toxic masculinity when it's done by a woman. Women like femininity. Shocking, I know. Hell, women appreciate female beauty more than men do, for heaven's sakes. So to say you don't want pretty things in games because it might appeal to a male audience yeah, you're actually harming women more so with this move, hence why I say they just hate people in general. I could never wrap my head around that bollocks either. 
I should probably reword that phrase at some point. But I can't understand how people can lose themselves in a fantasy world of old or some dystopian hellscape with fictional monsters or creatures. That's fine. But the moment they see some so-called unrealistic standard or anything related to humans, they commence the banshee screeching. Even though if you look at damn near any chick on Instagram or OnlyFans or gym selfies, they all have or aspire to have that same body type. And frankly, I'm not so much annoyed at them as much as I am the people who take their stupidly irrational and hypocritical answers seriously, instead of dismissing them as the whimpering peasants they deserve to be seen as. Why on earth is anyone listening to an annoying bunch of gimps whose entire gig is to whine and bitch and can never be satisfied with anything? That's a good question that I should probably put it on a bloody t-shirt. Now having said all of that though, the freak out over this character Eve. Honestly, I wish more people would adopt the tactic employed by the games director Hyung Tae Kim, which for all intents and purposes is pretty much exploiting the drive of a drug addict. Because the way these people freak out over this, let's be real here for a moment shall we, their lives are worthless and utterly empty. I think it's safe to say if you expend any energy whatsoever in getting worked up over the ass of a fictional character in a game, you're not worth much to humanity. Can we all just agree on that? I think that is a fair assessment. That's some bottom of the barrel reasons for getting out of bed in the morning. But this can be harnessed for amusing reasons because this kind of outrage has become their sustenance. So you can kill two birds with one stone. One, if you simply say, no bugger off, their only recourse is to then further amp up with more people because they have no other tactic, which will drive clicks and controversy and making them all look further unhinged. The more unhinged and angry they have to look to get their desired end goal, the more the controversy fuels sales because anything that visibly annoys those perpetually offended gimps is really, really amusing. It's like a growing loop and all the director has to do is simply not apologize. He gets free marketing by literally doing nothing. I mean, slightly facetious here, but that's just genius. And if the offended imps fail at their goal, perhaps they will learn that their goals suck and take up anything else. Maybe touch grass. And if they don't and become hopelessly demoralized, well, I'm not going to be losing any sleep over here. How about you? I seem to recall a saying, art imitates life. Well, the reality is pretty much everyone likes a nice ass, including women, which is why it's damn near the sole focus of every freaking female who's ever been near a barber and a camera. That behavior, coupled with the outrage, is what makes men clown women with half-open eyes and a tilted head thinking, you gotta be freaking kidding me. They'll defend sex work as empowering, but pixels cause what's left of their barely working brains to cease function. Oh, speaking of that, because whilst I may appear to have a massive ego, I have no problem admitting when I'm wrong or sharing something that I didn't think of in the first place. So a friend of mine, a fellow YouTuber, he's actually the one who shared the post with me that I used in the Gap AI video that I did. He said the reason for this isn't even ideological. It's much easier to explain, in fact. It's just capital allocation. Only fans and the likes drive capital towards women, whereas the pixels drive capital towards men. It's a simple question of market competition. You know when he said that, I was staring at the screen thinking, oh yeah, that's true. Why the fuck didn't I think of that? Here I am trying to think of some complex explanation, and he just saunders into the joint with a gem of an explanation. Occam's razor, very simple. Here's that one, mate. I do wonder though if they will realize that still makes him look kind of screwed up. I'll tell you what ladies, if you want men to stop objectifying you, you can start by not objectifying yourselves and stop looking at men like they're all merely walking ATMs. How about that? That's a fair trade, is it not? Don't forget to check out the Rumble video as well. Cheers for watching and once again, I apologize for nothing.